Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters in Islam. We are grateful and forever grateful as an Ummah that Allah in the Quran refers to this Ummah in the most of beautiful references. <clears throat> and the reason why Allah refers to us in this beautiful way, it is because we, this Ummah, we are the followers of the best of mankind. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And thus we have willed you to be a community of the Megal Path, so that you may bear witness to the truth before all mankind and the messenger might bear witness to it before you. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts some sense of responsibility to this ummah. He says that we are a community of a middle path, meaning that we are neither excessive nor are we stingy in our behavior and doing. This is a directive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The past couple of weeks, months, there's two incidences that I picked that I will make reference to, which have direct effect to us as Muslims. The first part, the first incident is what happened in this country on the 7th of May, where we went into elections and we elected a president of a country to lead us. And like any other incident, every time when there is some incident, Muslims start debating issues. And one of the debates that have been ensuing is that who do we vote for? And obviously there's different point of views. Some are saying we can't vote for ANC because of corruption and all that. Some saying we can't vote for DA because DA comes from the old order and all those kinds of things. And you know with corruption it affects the rent the rent affects business and all that and all that. Now, the reasons that I, we often hear are more personal. And one time I asked a brother, I said, but of all the things that the current government is doing, the corruption and all that, isn't there anything good that you can say about it? He says, no, they are doing good things. They're building houses and all that and all that and all that. And I said to the brother, what about your right to worship, isn't that the ultimate thing that you'd require of any ruler as a Muslim? That you are able to be a Muslim without any hindrance, you are able to practice your religion, you are able to give dawah, and nobody, you are protected by law to practice that. Something that in most countries, even in some Islamic countries, is now a difficulty. Isn't that what we as Muslims are supposed to be celebrating more than any other thing? Because in any land, in any country where the Sharia is not the law of that country, it makes no difference to us. Because the only thing that a Muslim should seek is ibadah. To be able to serve Allah without any hindrance. And that protection has been given to this Ummah in this country since 1994 without any compromise. 
South Africa as a country is the only country that I know of that is Western inclined that has been consistent on the issue of Palestine. South Africa as a country is the only country that I know of as a matter of principle. They've taken a view with regards to Western Sahara, where Muslims in Morocco are suppressing other Muslims. And South Africa has been very clear with that regard, meaning that this government, as far as protection of the rights of the minority, has been spearheading that to the front. The second incident that is bothering us, that is giving us, if you love this being, sleepless night, or it should give you sleepless night, is the issue of Boko Haram. It's all over the news. But the issue here is no longer about Boko Haram. The issue is about Muslims. What kind of people are these people who hijack kids and sell them and make all sorts of threats? What is supposed to be the response of us as Muslims? Are we supposed to make speeches against Boko Haram and say that what they are doing is wrong, it's un-Islamic. What are we supposed to do? Obviously, the world is sticking together against Boko Haram, but ultimately, it's going to be against Muslims. Now, I, I, I came up uh, 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 around, uh, uh, around an article which was written by a certain Molana, they call him Sajad Nomani. I tried to get hold of him to confirm whether it is indeed him who wrote this article or who said these words. I couldn't, but somebody who's his student confirmed that indeed he did say this. And what is he saying? He's saying in this article how to avoid a bloodbath in South Africa. Now, these people, they went and made a research why in India are the Hindus killing Muslims? And these were their findings. On being asked about the cause of their hatred for, to, to Muslims, they said, you Muslims have become very prosperous in this country. You have large businesses and successful institutes. You see your pro we see your prosperity amid the poverty that afflicts us and burn us. We see you eat and throw the leftovers in the dead in the dustbins and live lavish life, have lavish functions, jalsas, whereas we are suffering right next to you. We couldn't bear this pain, so we decided to kill you. Now, let's go back to what Allah said. Allah says in the Quran, and I will repeat it, and thus we have willed that you be the community of the middle path so that you, may, you might bear witness to the truth to hack before all mankind, and that the apostle will bear witness to it before you. Meaning that you are supposed to lead as Muslims. You cannot be excessive, nor can you be stingy. You cannot have this lavish life, whereas all around you there's poverty, and you are not extending your hand. Now, I'm saying that the only response as Muslims against any negative views about us, whether it's Boko Haram, whether it's Al-Qaeda, whether it's what, the only response of Muslims should just be a simple response of giving a, hel a helping hand. Behave like our Rasul. Go out being the minority in this country. We are not immune to what is happening in Central African Republic. Muslims have been butchered and killed in DRC. Not because Muslims did anything wrong, but the hatred for Muslims is now gaining momentum. And we are not responding as Muslims and I'm not talking about making speeches, because talking is cheap. We need to do more 
as Muslims to show what this deen is all about. So that we should show the legacy that was left for us by the Prophet, by his family, by the Sahaba. So that we can save ourselves from ourselves. We cannot continue looking at our minor differences. Imam Khomeini said that whilst you are arguing about whether to fold your hand or put them on the side, the enemy is planning to chop them off. Those are minor issues. Muslims are faced with critical and scary issues. And in this country, the majority of the poor have declared war already, not against Muslims, but against the rich. Because of they see their suffering. They see what they are going. They've blamed the government, and the government obviously is not doing anything, but they are starting to think that those who are doing well, it is because they are benefiting from the same corrupt government. And when they come, and they will come, they will not choose who they're going to attack. They will attack each and every one of us who are well off. We need to be proactive. We need to start extending our helping hand, not turning people into Muslims, making people to take the shahada. That is important, yes. But people don't eat the shahada. They need more than that. They need compassion. They need to feel it. The prophet was al Amin before the advent of the Quran. Before he was called into prophethood, already he was the best of men. But we have the Quran, we have the prophet, we have the hadith. We know how to quote them, we know how to recite them, but we are unable to practice, practice them. Why are we not beloved of all people? Instead, we are the most hated of people, whereas the man that we follow was the loved of all people. When the people of Saudi Arabia, of Arabia, rejected the prophet, they never rejected the prophet as a man. They rejected the message of the Quran because the Quran was bringing something that was taken for some and giving to others. And people of that time didn't want to lose because the prophet was saying a slave and a master will kneel before their Lord shoulder to shoulder. They didn't want that. They wanted to, treat, to be treated special. That is why they rejected the Quran. However, the prophet was still one of the most beloved of men. Even when they wanted to kill him, none of them went and said that we have entrusted you with our property, our money, bring it back. They never did because they knew that their money is safe even under those circumstances. But Muslims can't be trusted today with anything. When you speak to a Muslim, it can't be on a shake of a hand. You must write it down, brother. And the prophet knew it. That is why he said everything that you do, any deal that you do, please write it down. He knew how we're going to turn out. Because we would have deviated from the tenets and the principles of Islam. A loving Islam. Islam of peace. Islam of compassion. Islam that extends its hands to the poor, to the needy. We cannot allow a situation where people blow up women and children and they say, Allahu Akbar. Not in our name. We need to start showing the Islam that Prophet Muhammad left for us. That legacy is priceless. But it is our choice to accept it, to live it, or suffer the consequences. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.